Do you know how to turn a painting like this into a painting like this? Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you for stopping by. Have you ever seen a painter talk about, I'm going to touch this up later with a brush, or I'm going to add embellishments when it's dry? Maybe you hear them say that, or then you watch them do it and you go, well, that's really cool, but there's no way that I could ever do that. I'm not a brush painter. Let me just tell you, it isn't as hard as you might think. Today, I'm going to take my wreath painting and I'm going to embellish it, touch it up with three different techniques and none of them require fine art brush painting skills. So let's go embellish a painting. So I'm going to start out by adding the textured snowflake stencil. So this right here is the snowflake stencil that I'm going to use, and I've put tape over the other ones that I'm not using. So I'm just going to place that right here in the middle and tape it to the surface. So this is my second time doing the the textured stencils. If you didn't see my ring pour with the snowflake stencils on it, you can click this link that's popping up. I think it turned out really amazing and made me want to try it again. So since I had this little hole to cover, I thought, well, yeah, let's add another snowflake. Okay, so that's taped down. That should hold it in place. So I've got my Liquitex Basics gloss gel and then I'm going to be doing pearlescence, which is metallic white and silver. So it's going to be sort of a two-tone snowflake. So let me start by putting on a thin coat of gloss gel. This helps add the texture and it also creates kind of a seal between the stencil and the painted surface so the paint doesn't smear underneath your stencil. You want it fully covered, but quite a thin layer. So now I'm gonna add uh, some of the pearlescence. I tell you what, the hardest part is getting a nice smooth texture with the paint. Okay, that's enough of the pearlescence. Let's get just a little bit of the silver. Well, this may end up being mostly silver since I put that on the top, but I don't mind. That's what I wanted it to mostly be. Okay, I think we'll call that good enough. Let's go ahead and lift it up. Ooh, super cool. And it is two-tone. The outside is much more of the pearlescence and the inside is silver, so that's that's wonderful. Love that. Let me show you how that looks. Isn't that cool with the texture and it is a two-tone snowflake. So I definitely, I would have liked to keep it just a plain white center and a simple wreath, but because I had that distracting texture in the middle, I felt like a snowflake would be the best thing to kind of hide that. Okay, next thing is I'm going to, these uh, poinsettia petals, they've gotten a little bit like this, like they're too skinny in the middle. So I have some of my leftover red paints and I'm just going to widen those out so that they look a little bit like a straighter petal. And for that, I'm gonna be using a brush. 
So you will notice that I have a few different brushes on my table. It does help to have several different sizes and styles of tip. Most of the time I just use a fine tip, but sometimes it's nice to have, uh, you know, sort of a chisel tip or a round tip, depending on the type of touch-ups that you're doing. What I'm doing here is basically I'm just adding some of the red paint to all those places where the petals have narrowed to make the sides a little bit straighter and fuller to make it look more like what I imagine a flower petal looks like. So it really isn't complicated work. I'm just kind of extending the lines that are already there, thickening them up, maybe straightening them out so that they aren't distracting. If you save some of the paint from your acrylic pores in a little cup with a lid, it makes it very easy because then you don't even have to mix it up. You already have the exact color ready to just dip your brush into and touch up whatever you need to. Okay, so the petals there are a little bit neater shaped now. So now I'm gonna do the berries with those same colors, just round them out because they've gotten just a little bit lopsided. So again, with these berries, I am literally just adding paint and kind of nudging it around until the berry is a round shape again because they got a little bit lopsided. So it's very, very easy to take something that isn't perfect from the wet application and just make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit less distracting. That's one of the great things about brush touch-ups. Okay, berries are done. It's looking really great. I wanna let all of that red dry before I add in more green. And I think I'm gonna be using some paint markers for the next part, so I'm excited about that. But let me let this dry first, I'll be right back. Well, I wasn't totally sure how just the single snowflake in the middle looked, so I went ahead and added just a few others, a couple other snowflakes and a couple of like twinkles, so that it kind of looks like you're looking through a wreath out at a snowy background with the snow falling and the twinkling on the ice so I really like that. I like how it disguises the messy middle and how it, uh, it looks natural. It looks interesting instead of just like, why is there a snowflake in the middle of that wreath? That's weird. Anyway, uh, the next part is to move into some more touch-ups. So I've already added red to just neaten up the poinsettias. But the next thing is, I have some of these paint markers. I've never used these before. These are from Hippie Crafter acrylic paint markers. Just got this. Super excited to use it. So I've picked out some colors that go along with this wreath because I think it may be easier to add a lot of the details with these markers instead of with a brush. I'm gonna start with a brush on this leaf just because I need to match the exact color. But for some of the other ones, I'm gonna be using these markers and we'll see just how easy they are. So I'm looking forward to that. But for now, I've got my dark green color and I wanna to touch up this holly leaf here. There's some places where it's just a little bit not totally neat. It's just not quite how I want it. So I'm going to touch that up with a brush. So I just have this little brush and I think that's what I'm gonna use right now.
So the green paint that I've got is my same, it's my leftovers from the actual painting. I like touching up with fluid paint because it does not leave texture or not a lot of texture. So one of the things I'm doing here is I'm thinning down these veins so that they look quite small. Because I think my lighter green paint was less dense and so it kind of floated on top of this dark green paint instead of sinking in. And it's pretty easy to just add a little bit of the dark paint around the edge and thin it down. The cool thing about this kind of touch-ups is it really does not take massive artistic talent. You don't have to be this amazing brush painter to do touch-ups. All you have to do is sort of figure out what you want and be careful and put it on a little bit at a time. And as you try it, it will grow less and less scary to where you go, oh yeah, I can do that. Because there are some things that are so, so, so much easier to do after the fact. It's so much easier to add certain touch-ups with a brush instead of trying to do it while the paint is wet. So if you're nervous about trying touch-ups, don't be. Just give it a shot and you can do it. So see here, already this leaf is looking so much more, so much better. It's looking less messy. Uh, it's got a more defined shape. The veins are not quite as big. So this is, this is great. I'm just gonna work a little bit more on thinning down these veins. So that was super easy. It's just following the lines, filling it in. If you imagine, how would I want this to be if it just was? You know, where would I want the shape? And then you draw that in. So it's very easy. Okay, I feel like trying one of these paint pens. So what I want to use the paint pen for first is where these... Um, berries are, I'd like to make kind of some twigs so it looks like they're all on on a twig. So I've got a brown marker here and I've got some greens also but I think brown for a twig would make sense so that's what I'm gonna start with. So I'm gonna start with this one here and let's see if I can make a twig sort of coming out from behind one of these branches. So these came with a round tip and a chisel tip. So I'm using the chisel tip for most of these so because it has the fine point on it. So let's see how this goes. First, I gotta get the paint flowing. You're supposed to like press down on the tip until the paint flows. So it appears to be coming, all right.
it's taking away a little bit of it that got on the berry. The way I'm doing this is I've, I've got my brush just damp. And then you kind of wipe it up. A damp brush is almost like an eraser if you catch it fast enough. All right, let me show you. Do you see those little twigs there that I've added? So it's very subtle. This brown is kind of light, but um, I do love how it just adds a little bit of detail, makes it look like, oh yeah, obviously there's berries there and there's a stem too. So I'm gonna add another stem down here. Where do I want the stem to come from? I like that there. Okay, I'm going to turn this so I don't smear anything while I make a couple more stems here. There. Oh, that's so cute. See that? Love that. Um, okay, there's one more set of berries. So cool. So that was super easy. Very, very easy to add those fine lines, especially if you're nervous about, you know, you think I can't use this brush, it's floppy. So if using a brush makes you nervous, it could be that investing in some paint markers or paint pens like these would help you be able to add some fine details without being scared. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got a white paint marker and I'm just going to add a little bit of like a glare mark on the berries to make them look more three-dimensional and glossy. So to do that, I'm just going to make this little, it's kind of like a crescent shape in the same spot of each berry. That's so cute. And I, I'm making sure to have, have this positioned the way I want so that all of those little shine marks are on the same spot of each berry. I didn't get it quite in the right spot. So I'm just quickly wiping it off with a little bit of water. There we go. Let's try that again. Super cool. Look how much better, how much more extra detail is added just with that tiny little line. Love that. Okay, next thing, I have these two yellow paint markers, sort of a regular yellow and more of a warm yellow. And I, I left the round tips on those because I want to make the centers of the poinsettia flowers and I want them to be pretty much made out of circles of different colors of yellow. So let's do that. Man, that's so easy. It's just drawing. You don't have to worry about how you hold the brush and which direction you're moving the brush. You just draw. Super fun. Now, since I'm drawing with a light color on a dark color, it's possible I'll have to come in and put on another layer to keep it really bright. We'll see. Let's do the oranger one now. Nice. 
I'm liking that. It's a fairly basic center, but it does definitely give the impression of a flower center. I've got this sort of light pinkish red marker, and I'm thinking about trying to make a little bit more petal texture with that. So let me give that a try. Yeah, again, that's pretty simple, basic, but it also does give the impression of those petals. And sometimes an impression is all you need. This is abstract art, after all. All right, we'll do that to the other two ones. I like that. That's just a little bit more detail to those flowers. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want, this leaf is beautiful, but because it's light green and there's light green on each side of it, you can't really see the edge. So I've got this dark green paint marker. I'm having so much fun with these. They're really fun to use. So I'm gonna try to use this on the edge. It may be that the color will not match enough with the dark green, and I'll have to use, and I'll have to come in and do it with a brush in the end. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this. Okay, so that's the kind of shading that I want, but as you can see, it is not the right color, so I will have to do it with a brush after all. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. There's my leftover paint. But now I kind of have a shape to follow, and that'll make it easier. I think I'm also going to darken up this center vein just a little bit. And of course, it's going to be harder to do now that I've got paint along the edges, but I'm going to, going to try. I like that leaf so much better now. You can just see it a lot better now that it's got darkness around the edge. Uh, you can see the shape of that leaf. It's wonderful. Okay, let's see. I've done the poinsettias, the centers and the petals. I've touched up this leaf and this leaf. I've added the stems and the sort of shine marks on the berries. I've added the snowflakes in the middle. I don't know that there's anything else to add. I mean, I'm sure I could go to town. If you're somebody that loves to sketch and stuff, you could totally go to town with this and add all kinds of details. But I really like it. I feel like the focal points are detailed and the rest of it is kind of abstract. So there are two spots where I have to touch up just the white base color. It's gotten something in it. Other than that, we're done. Oh man, I tell you what, I am always amazed at how much better you can make a painting just with a little bit of touching up with a brush, with evening out some lines, covering up something that looks distracting, maybe adding some texture like those snowflakes in the middle, and then the fine details that I was able to get with these paint markers, that it made it so, so easy 
to touch this up and just make it really come to life. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to try something new and maybe gave you a boost of confidence that you might need to start embellishing or touching up your own pores. You can go to the description box to see the link to the paint markers that I use. I hope to see you back on my channel for another video very soon. Bye!